Good morning and welcome to the 2023 Western U Commencement Ceremony. It is recommended but not required that you wear a mask that cover your nose and chin while indoors. Masks are available in the lobby. Please silence your electronic devices. The commencement ceremony will begin in 10 minutes.
Distinguished guests, please take your seats and silence your electronic devices. The commencement ceremony will begin momentarily. Distinguished guests, we are honored to welcome you to the Pasadena Civic Auditorium for the 42nd Annual Western University of Health Sciences Commencement Ceremonies. For those who are able, please rise now to greet the class of 2023.
graduates, welcome the administration and faculty of Western University of Health Sciences. invite you to please be seated.
For those who are able, please rise for our commencement speakers, deans, provost, board of trustees, and president of Western University of Health Sciences. Distinguished guests, the president of Western University of Health Sciences, Dr. Robin Farias Eisner. Please remain standing, if you are able, for our national anthem and the invocation that follows. Here to sing the national anthem is current first year Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine student, Dana Jean Manalo. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through 
Reverend Dr. Ken Fong. Please bow your heads. Gracious and good eternal one, creator and sustainer of the universe and all that is within it, grant us today a profound sense that you are with us, that you are the one that is about to launch those who are poised to graduate, to send them to places that you have prepared for them to be your special agents of tender mercies and judicious care. Use them mightily to bring balance and wholeness to a hurting world that is desperate for healing, relief, and sympathetic ears. Help them never to forget that they too are human, susceptible to fatigue, burnout, pride, making mistakes, even getting sick and dying too. May their shared humanity always inform and illuminate their healing practices. Bless them for their years of discipline, study, and learning. Enable and empower them to be your vessels of knowledge and wisdom, of mercy and compassion. May they each savor reaching this milestone today, thankful too for all who've joined you to help them arrive at this seminal moment in their journeys as hope bearers. May you use each of them in both simple and profound ways to bless and soothe this world. Amen. Please be seated. Distinguished guests, the president of Western University of Health Sciences, Dr. Robin Farias Eisner. Thank you to Dana Jean Manilow, and to Reverend Dr. Ken Fong for that wonderful opening and our ceremony today. I was getting quite emotional during both, but that was just a beautiful beginning to our ceremonies. Congratulations, class of 2023. We are so proud of you. And may I begin this exciting morning by sharing with you a new university marshal for Western University of Health Sciences. One of Western U's foundational roles is the university marshal, who leads the procession that opens every ceremony, as you just saw, and who symbolizes the spirit at the university. At the beginning of this ceremony, we literally made history. Together, we witnessed a rite of passage that has only happened four times in Western U's 45-year history. Dr. Alan Kondari has served as University Marshal since 2009. This morning, he passed the mace to our fifth University Marshal, Dr. Gerald Thrush, Comp and Comp Northwest Vice Dean for Academic Affairs. I would like to invite Dr. Provost Cone, Crone, and I would like to present Dr. Kandari with a gift on behalf of the university in gratitude for his many years of exemplary service as he transitions into the role of University Marshal Emeritus. All right. He said, I'm retired. He really can't wait for his Tesla, that's what he really said. <laughs> like his predecessors, Dr. Thrush embodies all that makes Western U special. He is deeply committed to our mission of humanistic care for all. He is a mentor, a friend, a sounding board for countless students, faculty, and staff. And he lives a life devoted to service, institutional excellence, and professional achievement. I would like to formally introduce Dr. Gerald Thrush as our new University Marshal 
Dr. Thrush, please stand. <laughs> Distinguished trustees, faculty, staff, esteemed guests, proud families, friends, and most importantly, our esteemed graduates of the class of 2023. It's both an honor, a pleasure, and a privilege to address you today as we come together to celebrate this momentous occasion. You are the graduating class of 2023, a distinct honor indeed. Please give yourselves that congratulatory applause. And we know how amazing you are. You are our new ambassadors, our emissaries. This year, we will surpass 20,000 milestone for the number of Western U alumni worldwide. And you will now join those elite ranks. You are forever a part of the Western U community. Celebrating among us today, you may not know, is a chemical engineer, a life coach, a volleyball coach, a lifeguard, an army sergeant, a sales executive, only to mention a few. I would like to now express a very heartfelt sense of gratitude, not only to you, our esteemed graduates, but also to your families and friends and loved ones for the commitment, dedication, hard work, and sacrifice required to arrive at this point here today, without whose support none of this would have been possible. Would all the amazing families, friends, and loved ones supporting our esteemed graduates here today please stand and be recognized. We so appreciate you. Please be seated for all of you who are still standing. As you prepare to embark on the next phase of your journey, I am humbled to share some thoughts on the powerful themes of humanism and our coveted Western U ethos and how these special principles will shape your careers and significantly impact the lives of those you serve. From the very outset of your unique education, you have been steeped in the holistic approach to patient care with a focus on the interconnectedness of mind, body, and spirit. As you venture forth into your chosen fields, remember to always consider the whole patient, recognizing that the best care is not just about treating symptoms, but understanding the underlying causes and addressing them with compassion and empathy. So humanism, a core precept of our beloved university is a commitment to treat everyone with that dignity, respect, and kindness. It's the understanding that our patients are more than a collection of symptoms and signs. They are a complex being with their own stories, struggles, and triumphs. By embracing humanism, you will forge strong connections with your patients empowering them to be active participants in their own care and in their own healing process. As Western U trained clinicians, you are truly unique and you truly have a unique skill set to offer the world. You have been trained to appreciate the body's innate ability to heal itself. This philosophy extends beyond the physical realm and into the emotional and spiritual aspects of our patients' lives. As healers, it is crucial to recognize the power of empathetic listening and genuine connection. In times of uncertainty and vulnerability, your presence and your understanding can be the balm that heals the soul as much as the body. As a surgeon scientist educator while at UCLA, I had, I, I had a surgical oncology practice and I once asked one of my favorite centenarian patients, just as she turned 100 years old, 
What is the most special, would you say, of being this old, of being over 100? And she looked at me and she said, well, I appreciate more and more that there's less peer group pressure. <laughs> but then she also said, I appreciate more and more the importance of kindness, compassion, and respect in our daily lives and how important it is, particularly in the healthcare arena. I believe what this patient was trying to communicate to me is how very impactful and significant the element of humanism truly is in the practice of our art. What does it mean? It means altruism is our approach. Caring, compassion, empathy is central to our daily craft. Diversity, equity, inclusivity, anti-racism is our attitude. Fairness, kindness, and respect, civility is our healing art. And faith and integrity is in all things we do. These unique skills are what I referred to earlier that you possess. And that's what defines our common mission, which is focused on healthcare community and education. Humanism, of which you are now ambassadors, as Western U defines the concept, is to commit to these values, to actively embed these values into your goals, missions, and practices, to comport yourselves in a way that exemplifies these values and shape our culture, and to remain accountable to the values. Embracing this ethos empowers us to effectively serve our community and our individuals. As ambassadors of the university, I would encourage you to always honor these values through an algorithm of commitment, intention, action, and reflection. No matter how cliche it may sound, one will never truly be successful in the practice of our art until we give beyond ourselves. And that is what we strive to do at Western U, and that is what you are gifted to do. We could not be on this journey alone. Our faculty have lived this message through all their interactions with you in classroom and in clinical settings. But most of all, through the examples they set as highly capable, humanistic, and compassionate healthcare professionals. Likewise, we would not be here if it were not for the hard work and dedication of our outstanding staff. I ask that you join me in acknowledging and honoring the excellence of our outstanding and extraordinary faculty and staff as they stand to be recognized. Please stand, faculty and staff. We want to honor you and congratulate you for all that you do for the university. Please be seated, thank you. Another key and distinguished group of unsung heroes who work tirelessly for our students in the background to ensure the highest quality of education and to protect this coveted university mission. Please join me in acknowledging and honoring our extraordinary trustees as they stand and be recognized. Thank you for all that you do. I would like now to take a moment to express appreciation for those who make this wonderful event possible, notably the remarkable work of our university commencement committee under the leadership of Dr. Beverly, Beverly Guidry, Senior Vice President for University Student Affairs, the support of Director Toria Thomas and her exceptional special events team, the Departments of Information, Technology, Communications, Public Affairs, and the Campus Bookstore. Please mention, also a special mention is due to Greg Christie and the excellent production crew at Bright Ideas. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all what you have done for us. <laughs> Class of 23, a very heartfelt congratulations to all of you, of all and all, from the trustees, faculty, staff, family, friends, and loved ones on behalf of all of us 
we want you to know that you will never be alone in whatever path your destiny may take you. We are always with you. Thank you, new ambassadors. Congratulations and Godspeed to you. In preparation for the remainder of our exciting ceremony, I wish to briefly describe the current commencement process. This year, five ceremonies will be held in Pasadena, California, the Graduate College of Biomedical Sciences and the College of Health Sciences ceremony will take place this afternoon. The Colleges of Dental Medicine, Pharmacy, Graduate Nursing, and Optometry tomorrow on May 18th, and the College of Veterinary Medicine on Friday, May 19th. Comp Northwest will hold their commencement ceremony in Lebanon, Oregon on May 26th. An important tradition also is the presentation of a university label pin to each one of our beloved graduates. The pins will be presented by our alumni representative, Dr. Kira Parahan, and he is a distinguished graduate of the class of 2017. The pin is offered as a gift to the newest members of our alumni family and bears the university seal and the degree that the graduate has earned. We hope you will wear it. We're confident you will wear this pin often and with pride as ambassadors for Western University of Health Sciences and for the health profession. Now I have the distinct honor to introduce the chair of Western U's Board of Trustees, the Honorable Consuelo Callahan. Judge Callahan has served on the Ninth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals since 2003. She was nominated by President George W. Bush and confirmed unanimous, unanimously by the Senate. She previously served on California's Court of Appeal, Third Appellate District, and the San Joaquin County Supreme Court. Prior to becoming a judge, Judge Callahan worked as a deputy district attorney, a supervising district attorney, and a deputy city attorney. And if that wasn't enough, she has taken on incredible dedication, commitment, and loyalty to this university with no compensation. She has worked tirelessly to make everything as wonderful as it is and continues to do so. I thank you, Judge Callahan, for that dedication, commitment, and loyalty, and for all the extraordinary progress you have made for the university. Thank Greetings. you, Mr. President. <laughs> On behalf of the Western Board of Trustees, it is my distinct honor to congratulate our wonderful graduates today. We are so proud of you. While your dedication and hard work were critical to reaching this milestone, you did not get here alone. I would like to also thank and congratulate all those who made this day possible. Your family, your friends, our wonderful faculty, staff, and administrators. You have two families. Your family, your personal family and friends, and your Western University family. At Western University, our commitment to you is one of family, from cradle to grave. As one chapter of your life finishes today, a new chapter begins tomorrow. We are ready to send you out in the world, but we do not say farewell. We will never forget you. We are here to support you, but please never forget us. You have been trained to always put the patient first, to treat patients with equity and humanism and as well as science in all of your decisions and actions. Each Western U class has a fascinating personality of its own. So, so much talent and so much diversity. After we complete our graduations of 2023, we will have an army of 20,620 Western graduates that are out there in the world transforming healthcare. Imagine that, such power, 
such potential. Give yourself a hand. In the same way that I lecture my godchildren, my hand is on each of your shoulders. We all bless you, and we pray that you actualize your highest potential and goals. You are our legacy, but never, I mean never, miss the opportunity to do good when you are doing well in your profession. I promise you, at, as your career comes to an end, which is a long way off, you will only regret the people that you did not help. So celebrate today. You deserve it. But tomorrow is not too early for the world to feel the, pres feel the presence of your humanism and good deeds. Think of how when you throw a pebble into a pond, the circles radiate out to the shoreline and touch all the surrounding area. Use your Western education to touch as many lives as possible. I know that you will. Congratulations. It is now my honor to introduce our next speaker, our provost, Dr. Paula Crone, a proud graduate of Comp Class of 1992. In her career, Dr. Crone has led her own private primary care practice and was the program director for the Family Medicine Residency Program at Eastmoreland Hospital in Portland, Oregon, which trained DO physicians in the Pacific Northwest. Dr. Crone was one of the pioneers and founders in the development of Comp Northwest, built in part with the physicians she trained while at Eastmoreland Hospital in Portland. Dr. Crone was named founding site dean of Comp North Northwest in 2010, and then dean of Comp and Comp Northwest in 2013, making her both the first Comp alum and first female to serve as Dean of Western U. Since then, she has continued to be a leader in the development of Western U, Oregon. Dr. Crone served as Western U's interim provost from April 2022 through February of this year when she was elected as provost and chief academic officer of the university, another first for a woman at this university. Provost Crone is a passionate advocate for Western U students and as a leader in shared governance across all constituents of Western U, she works tirelessly for the success of Western U and is highly regarded throughout the country both professionally and personally. The Board of Trustees appreciates all of the work that you do, Dr. Crone, and I give you Dr. Crone. Thank you. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, the Honorable Consuelo Callahan, for your insightful remarks. And thank you, President Fari Seisner, Dean Conant, and Dean Leibovitz, and all your faculty and staff, and your graduates. This is an incredibly special day of celebration for our graduates and a time of appreciation for all our Western U community. A special shout out to our faculty who give so much and to our staff who make all things happen. And congratulations are in order to Dr. McIntosh who retires this year after 17 years of dedicated service. Thank you, Dr. McIntosh. My heartfelt welcome to all in our audience. I recall my own graduation day, my family gathered together, my dad hooding me, memories I will always cherish. I never fail to be hopeful and proud as I watch our graduates receive their diplomas every year. Graduates, we have been through a lot since you first started at Western U, from once in a hundred year fires to a global pandemic. Together, you tackled tough social issues and you worked for true global change. And in the process, 
you navigated through some of the toughest times in your generation, in all our generations, and you did it with an unconquerable spirit. It was impressive. In this world filled with division and wounds, you have the opportunity to serve and to lead. Indeed, it is one of your calling cards as a Western U graduate as you move forward and take your place in healthcare. Know that as you do so, we are proud of you and we have confidence in you. You are entering professions where you get to make an impact, one moment at a time, one patient at a time, one community at a time. Graduates, we have all been humbled frequently as we have watched you learn and grow, gain your confidence, find your voices, and work so hard to get to where you are today. One of you shared with me earlier this week at the commissioning ceremony that this week was the culmination of your life's dreams. Many of you in this audience feel that today. As you do your own reflection, remember those special individuals who helped you along the way, those that never gave up on you, who taught you those unforgettable hard-learned lessons, those that pushed you, and those that believed in you. Treasure them and thank them. Never stop learning and never forget that you have the ability to make a difference and never stop trying to make your corner of the world a better place. Keep honing your expertise, your knowledge, and your skills, and never lose your humanity, your compassion, and your ability to care. As many of you have heard me say before, this world has never needed you more. I have hope for the future because of what I've already seen you do. I wish for all of you to find joy in the work you do, happiness in your life, and the courage to embrace all that comes, to be leaders in your communities and always the champions of your patients, to be healers and to seek wellness, not just treat disease, to not only stand on the shoulders of all those giants that came before you, but to strive to be that giant yourself so that others can stand upon your shoulders. Always strive for excellence and always keep your standards set high. Your patients will count on you for that. Your education will serve you well. Never forget to care for your patients with purpose, passion, and skill, to use your head, hands, and your heart to listen and to care. And always remember, at the end of every action, every thought, every deed, there is your patient. Congratulations, class of 2023. We are so proud of you. It is now my pleasure to introduce our graduate speakers. Our graduate speakers were nominated by their peers, approved by their dean, and voted on by their class. This is a significant honor bestowed upon them by their classmates. Our graduate speakers today are Catherine Lucia Gutierrez for the College of Podiatric Medicine and David Patrick Ashley for the College of the Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific. Dr. Gutierrez is known for her effervescent spirit and always going above and beyond in her role in the Student Government Association to serve her classmates. Since the first day of Welcome Week, she made efforts to establish friendships and stay deeply connected with her class, always striving to learn how best to advocate for their success and their wellness. Her passion for podiatric medicine is contagious. She did a remarkable job serving as admissions ambassador and chapter vice president for the American Association of Women Podiatrists. Her classmates and faculty unanimously selected her to deliver the graduate address for the College of Podiatric Medicine today. Dr. Ashley is greatly appreciated by his classmates for his leadership, service, heart, and for being a true friend and supporter. He is never too busy or too tired to help a classmate in need. Through adversities related to the pandemic, he steadfastly and respectfully advocated for a high standard of academic excellence and curricular delivery. He never stopped fighting for what was right. As student government president, he served his class well and inspired them to stay committed to their goals. He is loved and admired by his classmates and was proudly selected to deliver the graduate address for the College of Osteopathic Medicine at the Pacific today. 
We are so proud of them and so proud of our graduates. I would like to extend a special welcome to Preston Fergus Eisner, Provost Crone, Western New Board of Trustees, all the deans, administrators, faculty and staff, fellow graduates, and to all the families and friends here today. Thank you for being here to celebrate the class of 2023. Here we are, class of 2023. We are done with the journey through medical school, and we embark now onto a dream come true. Not many people can say that they love their job. Even less people can say that they have spent thousands of dollars in a dream. We sit here together in community knowing each and every one of us has poured love, tears, sweat, and heartache into becoming doctors. Today, it is for you, for all the nights spent awake, for all the caffeine consumed, the birthday parties missed and the gatherings were gone. Today, we celebrate the achievement of a lifetime a step into the future that awaits us as podiatric and osteopathic physicians, as healers. We honor those that stood with us through this journey. We honor those that have passed along the way. To the memory of what it was and the hope of what it is to be, smile. Be as proud of yourselves as I am of you. My friends, it has been a great honor to go on this journey with you. Congratulations, class of 2023. Job well done. Good morning. It's an honor to be speaking you, to you today as your comp student speaker. My name is David Ashley, and I have had the privilege of serving as the DO 2023 class Student Government Association president and class representative for these past four years. And have they been a quite the four years? I mean, between COVID, the fight for social and racial justice, wildfires prompting evacuations, and you know, like medical school. <laughs> I mean, there's, we've been going through a lot. There's been a lot going on in our worlds, right? And these events and challenges have shaped our medical school experience for better or worse. And yet here we are. I'd argue they shaped us for the better though. With the pandemic, We've seen long-standing societal inequities exacerbated and the flaws in our healthcare system exposed. We've witnessed public distrust in institutions and leaders, unfortunately, occasionally including physicians too. However, we were able to grapple with these complex problems academically before we started our rotations. We were prepared to meet and address these challenges head on and we'll be prepared to meet any challenge we face throughout our careers. And we cannot allow ourselves to become jaded by challenges, though. Instead, we must lean into them, continue to learn, not just medicine, but about the context of how our patients present to us. Remember that every patient is a person, and remember to recognize your own humanity as well. And while the events of, of the future are uncertain, here's one thing that I do know. Each and every one of you is going to be an outstanding physician. Congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you, Dr. Gutierrez, Dr. Ashley, for your remarks. It is an honor to share this podium with you. Mr. President, I have for your consideration Mr. Gary Hall, Jr., the candidate for an honorary degree. It is my pleasure to present Gary Hall, Jr. Gary earned 10 Olympic medals over three Olympic Games, and he was inducted into the U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame in 2012. When I watched Gary swim in Atlanta, in Sydney, and in Athens, his competitive spirit stood out most. But only since getting to know Gary have I realized that this was really his strong desire to persevere. This tenacity helped him become the first Olympian to medal with type 1 diabetes. After his swimming career, his same drive and motivation to advocate for people living with diabetes in areas such as health policy, medical research, and in the pharmaceutical industry. 
He serves on several national and international sports organizations advocating for youth sports. And he serves on the World Clinic Board of the largest rural health care system in the United States. But most impressive is Gary remains humble with a simple desire to help others overcome their challenges. I invite you to refer to the program for the full summary of the highlights of Gary's distinguished career and extraordinary accomplishments. Now, Mr. President, it is my pleasure to present Gary Hall, Jr. as a candidate for the degree of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Thank you, Dean Lebowitz. Now, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you, Mr. Gary Hall, Jr., the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the rights, honors, privileges appertaining thereto, in witness thereof, I cause you to be vested with the hood appropriate to the degree and grant you this diploma. Hello, my name is Gary Hall, Jr., and uh, I'd like to thank the College of Podiatric Medicine and the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific for this tremendous honor to be here sharing in the celebration with all of you, a celebration of you. The commencement address, I'm so I'm told, uh, should be uh, inspiring, encouraging. Uh, after all, you're young, talented, and intelligent, steadfast and intent, hopeful. You have so much life in front of you, so much opportunity. And um, we cannot be assured success in life, but we can position ourselves to increase likelihood. You're there. You've accomplished this through hard work, sacrifice, and fortitude. You're eager to make your mark in the world. You want to earn the respect of loved ones and those who have selflessly, selflessly supported you along the way, the people who have guided you on this embarked journey. It's a proud day for all of them as well as for you. Be sure to thank them, and I've got some ideas later on how. In these prestigious colleges, you have had teachers, and in swimming, I had a coach, a mentor dedicated to helping fulfill potential. Someone who is genuinely interested in supporting you. Your success is their success. Someone who pushes and challenges you, regularly taking you outside of your comfort zone to prepare you for a life that will be, at times, extremely difficult. You'll make mistakes along the way, so stay humble. You'll experience headache and heartbreak. The greatest champions suffer epic losses. This is part of life written in our fate. It's okay to feel discouraged, but it is not okay to give up. We can experience satisfaction in embracing the struggle and occasionally defy the struggle with scattered victories. While you had classmates, I had teammates, friends and competitors both. They share your passion and goals, ambition, drive, and determination. They have pushed you further than you would have gone alone. The spirit of competition is a wonderful thing. The friendships forged last a lifetime. 
The rewards of your pursuit may surprise you. Wealth is how society measures success. An ability to support our loved ones does provide a sense of security, which is valuable and respected. However, you'll connect with a patient one day in a deeper, more meaningful way. And you'll be reminded that you care. That is success. The ability to alleviate human suffering outweighs the value of gold. And it comes down to caring for others. This is noble. This is success. And one day, you're going to be dealing with an asshole patient. <laughs> so, yeah. When that happens, take a pause, OK? Um, just pause for a moment and realize that this might be a good person flailing. The conditions that connect patients with doctors are scary. Fear, uncertainty, and pain bring out the worst in people. And you'll eventually, inevitably, be on the receiving end. It's unfocused and messy. Try not to take it personally, and don't let them bring you down. When you do reach that sense of security, wealth or whatever, mentor someone. Help someone on their path. Find their way. It's what this world needs right now, more than anything. More people who care and are willing to lend a helping hand to someone on a personal level, not just a professional level. Collectively, the ripple, the ripple effect that was referenced earlier by the good judge can change the world for the better. Do it to honor those who have helped you. Gratitude is a word with strong meaning. There is no better way to thank those who have helped you than paying it forward. Have fun, smile a lot. Hard work and fun are not exclusive. For a couple of years in high school, I used to wake up at 4.30 a.m. every morning and ride my bike to swim practice. I remember those times very well. Alone with my thoughts, practice started at 5.30 a.m. Sharp. You were punished severely if you were a minute late, usually with uh, a butterfly set at the long end of a long swim practice while everybody else was in the showers warming themselves, preparing themselves for school. And I always thought it was uh, strange that um, the punishment for being late would make you late for school. So I was late again. But tough love is... Uh, yeah, sometimes doesn't make sense, I guess. Uh, uh, but looking back, riding my bike to practice was a bigger influence on my character today than winning gold medals at the Olympic Games. One would not be possible without the other. The tough times make you stronger in time. Work hard and be patient. It'll pay off. You can cross a continent Climb the highest mountain in the world, one step, small step at a time. Each step takes you closer or further away from your destination. Know where your finish line is and put one foot in front of the other. And yes, all of you freshly minted podiatrists can use that line. A long, a long time ago, I reached the top of the Olympic podium crowned the fastest swimmer in the world. I didn't do it one lap at a time, but rather one stroke at a time. It's the small things, the details, the simple things that we are all capable of doing that add up to something great. A fortune can be built in pennies. Among other more prestigious positions, I'm a swim instructor. I have a learn to swim school, and I work with little kids teaching them how to swim. For me, there is nothing more rewarding. I absolutely love it. 
a lot of kids come in with a fear of water. Displacing fear with confidence in children is what I do. There's a light bulb moment that happens when a kid realizes that they can do it. They can swim. The expressions on their face change. It's magical, that moment. More powerful than standing on top of a box with a medal around your neck. There is a, a similar moment happening here today, right now, right here in this room. You can do this. You're ready. You're going to go out there and change the world. You're going to help a lot of people. Do it with care. Do it with kindness. Stay humble. Keep a smile on your face. Don't give up. Mentor someone and have fun. Have lots and lots and lots and lots of fun. Congratulations to all of you. Job well done. Thank you. And I was looking to my left to see who was up. And it was me. <laughs> that was beautiful words. Really quite extraordinary. Thank you, Gary, for what you just did. Um, that was really a, a remarkable and inspirational. Now we get to the special portion of this exciting ceremonies in which we have the honor to present you with the diploma. We still and will start with the College of Podiatric Medicine, and I would like to invite Dr. Lebowitz to the podium, and then we can begin. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Podiatric Medicine please rise and stand in place? <clears throat> Mr. President, the assembled candidates have met the requirements for graduation and have been recommended by the faculty for the degree of Doctor of Podiatric Medicine. It is my pleasure to present them to you. Thank you. Graduates, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you, as you individually present yourselves, the degree of Doctor of Podiatric Medicine and with all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Will the graduates please come to the stage? Dr. McKinnon Victor Abreu. Dr. Abraham Abukaran. Dr. Shravani Sai Ayala. Dr. Michael Amadeo. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. Jacob Azizi. Dr. Tal Busi. Dr. Alexander Carrillo Kashani. Dr. Adriana Casas. Dr. Lee A. Kerbo in Abstentia. Dr. Alexan, excuse me, Alex Zhang. Dr. Momen El Haddad. Dr. Nathan John Fisher. Dr. Mitchell Goldman. Dr. Catherine Lucia Gutierrez. Dr. Michael Guzardo. Dr. Stephen Ronald Harlan. Dr. Anthony Q. Hernan. Dr. Brandon Scott Hirata. Dr. Jonathan Aurelio Ibanez. Dr. Mina Adele Ibrahim. Dr. Murdad, 
could adduce them. Dr. Alexa Jolyn Martin. Dr. Samil Falgan Mehta. Dr. Mina Iman Messiah. Dr. Alyssa Sui Jin Miyasato. Dr. Bailey Kareen James Martin. Dr. Rahul V. Natarajan. Dr. Brandon Quag Nguyen. Dr. Sean Trong Nguyen. Dr. Anushka Sunil Ramnani. Dr. Brandon Julian Roca. Dr. Leo Rostamian. Dr. Asad Siddiqui. Dr. Perry Tan.
Dr. Sharla Taki. Dr. Suaesi Takaloa Tulifau. <laughs> Dr. Faustine Chang Vong. Dr. Damon Trey Wardle. Dr. Gordon George Yee. Dr. Alan Juwan Yu. I will now ask Dean Conant, after we finish, Dean Conant, thank you for stepping forward to present the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific. Now, will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine please rise and stand in place? Before we move forward with the proceedings, I would like to acknowledge in the program a student of Sumit Brower who will be awarded posthumously in 2024. Mr. President, the assembled candidates have met the requirements for the graduation and have been recommended by the faculty for the degree of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine. It is my pleasure to present them to you. Thank you, Dean Conant. Graduates, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you, as you individually present yourselves, the degree of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine with all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Will the graduates please come to the stage? Dr. Brianna A. On. <laughs> Dr. Hannah Bernice Badenreich. Dr. Cheryl Marie Hefty. Dr. Gilbert Alexander Hernandez.
Doctor, Caitlin, Stein, Jackson. Dr. Michael Kenneth McCreary. Dr. Kelly Elizabeth Padapoff. Dr. Julia Rose Ramirez. Dr. Laura Aboud Siriani. Dr. Rachel Abraham. <laughs> Dr. Ife Aluwa Tawo Adashina Aina. Dr. Osama Nassim Asan in abstentia. Dr. Anal Rehan Aksham. Dr. Matthew Clinton Alshuler. Dr. Neda Amin. Dr. Jocelyn Page Andrews. Dr. Sheila Leigh Sampson Angelo. Dr. Sawintha Aponso. Dr. Odelia Arashaben. Dr. Andrew Sprinson Arbogast. (laughs) 
Dr. Aisha Urshad. Dr. David Patrick Ashley. Dr. Sindos Badran. Dr. Hannah Gabriel Bang. Dr. Ryan Nee Bao. Dr. Baina Jenny Baruni. Dr. Jordan Spencer Bass. Dr. Chase Bauer. Dr. Matthew Allen Bergendahl. Dr. Udit Vinay Bhatt. Dr. Mira Bishawi. Dr. Sandhya Bodapati. Dr. Stevie Lynn Bogle. Dr. Austin Outlaw Bowden. Dr. Darius Gavino Buenaventura. Dr. Danby Van Bui.
Dr. Christina Berger. Dr. Yip Nak Gao. Dr. Jessica Gao. Dr. Joshua Moon Chen. <laughs> Dr. Tiffany Ting Chen. Dr. Stephanie Chang. Dr. Andrew Guan Chen. Dr. Henry Chang Ting Chen. Dr. Kwang Ching Chen. Dr. Angus Cheng. Dr. Emerald Cheng. Dr. Claire Sung Young Cho. Dr. Sohi Chung. Dr. Richard Michael Clifford. Dr. Gabriel Beta Kansunji. Dr. Hanna Lauren Cooperman.
Dr. Regina Yosibio Cosme. Dr. Michael Cowley. Dr. Sami Iraj Daher. Dr. Diane V. Dang. Dr. Austin Stephen DeYoung. Dr. Daniel Adrian Del Barrio Emil. Dr. Suki Dillon. Dr. Christine Doe. Dr. Hike Domayan. <laughs> Dr. Benjamin Schuyler Daughters Katz. Dr. Michael Drainick. Dr. Connie Duong. Dr. Shana Shaya Eptakarian. <laughs> Dr. Jonathan Luke Erickson.
Dr. Oswaldo Eugenio Escobar. Dr. Eli Ishagian. <laughs> Dr. Maria Lourdes Viel Espanta. Dr. Talia Fabian. <laughs> Dr. Shawnee Feng. Dr. Natalie Suzanne Fenske. <laughs> Dr. Veronica Fernandez. Dr. Megan Pateran Flanagan. <laughs> Dr. Pooja Gajur. Dr. Catherine Marie Gobriel. <laughs> Dr. Ricardo Guevara. Dr. Farigo Hakem Hakem Sadeh. <laughs> Dr. Levi Jesse Hamilton.
Dr. Joseph Ha Kwang. Dr. Mexi Jamal Hassan. <laughs> Dr. Jackson Hercules Hadi. Dr. Jasmine Kaur Heyer. Dr. Priyanka Nicole Heteshi. Dr. Benton Wang. Dr. Brendan Jayuk Hong. Dr. Emily Hordereyes. <laughs> Dr. Jessica Houghton. Dr. Matthew Bishoy Ibrahim. <laughs> Dr. Eric Michael Jang. Dr. Douglas Alexander Jury. Dr. Tanya Kantak. Dr. David Michael Karjala.
Dr. Brian Cotto. Dr. Faz Kademi. Dr. Hashem Khan. Dr. Hiba Ilyas Khan. <laughs> Dr. Ashna Khanna. Dr. Bisma Noor Khwaja. Dr. Andrew Pansu Kim. Dr. Cindy Nayoon Kim. Dr. Irene Minji Kim. Dr. G. Sok Kim. Dr. Christopher Joseph King. Dr. Sung Lok Kong. Dr. Diana Elizabeth Kwok. Dr. Kyo Lee. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Maggie Lee. Dr. Shannon Lee. Dr. Ryan Singh Leung. Dr. Azaria Victoria Lewis. <laughs> Dr. Rocky Key Lee. Dr. Sylvia Lee. Dr. Alexander Andrew Lim. Dr. Taryn Mare Liwag. <laughs> Dr. Jennifer Kaife Liu. Dr. Modiana Margo Lucero. Dr. Erica Elise Luke. Dr. Alicia Lunardi. Dr. Judy Lee. Dr. Katherine Vivi Lee. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. Kevin Mai. Dr. Yuri Maximyuk. Dr. Maria Marine. Dr. Mason Taro Matsubara. Dr. Divanshi Mitesh Mehta. Dr. Brittany Nicole Meyer. Dr. Joseph Paul Migliori. Dr. Asmita Mishrakar. Dr. Kevin Choa Mo. <laughs> Dr. Rohit Mohindra. Dr. Natalie Mock. Dr. Fahadad Moshtag Sesan. Dr. Mirko Omid Mostagimi. Dr. Johanna Wilhelmina Matram. Dr. Karina Munoz.
Dr. Rana Nath. Dr. Eric Christopher Nelson. Dr. Hani Newland. Dr. Kendall Palin Ng. Dr. Teresa Quinn No. Dr. Jacqueline Ha Win. <laughs> Dr. Lindsay Huang V. Nguyen. Dr. Megan Han Nguyen. Dr. Amy Nam. Dr. Emily Mihe No. Dr. Songyu No. Dr. Brianna Nicole Novak. Dr. Julia Marie Olson. Dr. Sheridan Taylor Andreak.
Dr. Claire Catherine Osterbahn. Dr. Jovi Rexal Hanem Orban. <laughs> Dr. Kiana Pembechi. Dr. Janu Shailish Patel. Dr. Shelley Alexis Pineda. Dr. Puyan Porres Vandiari. <laughs> Dr. Zing Yan Quek. Dr. Rabshan Rahman. <laughs> Dr. Taj Rai. Dr. Joe Kevin Command Rajagukuk. <laughs> Dr. Sapaprada Rangarajan in absentia. Dr. Patarida Rangchagun. <laughs> Dr. Anita Rao. Dr. Lindsay Michelle Rebner. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. Chance Ernest Rumler. Dr. Bezan Rastami. <laughs> Dr. Mani Nawapet Sakosakpanit. Dr. Saba Salim. <laughs> Dr. Nicole Kaur Samra. Dr. Juan Carlos Sanabria. <laughs> Dr. Jonathan Tony Saman. Dr. Ariel Mayer Shafa. I can't hear you. Dr. Teodek Shabandari. Dr. Brajesh Sharma. Dr. Madeline Michelle Shaver. Dr. Gabriela Leila Shirazi. Dr. Ryan Michael Shota.
Dr. Jasper Shu. Dr. Saad Akbar Siddiq. Dr. Ivan Anthony Silva. Dr. Babdeep Singh. Dr. Landon Bradford Smith. Dr. Stephen Soltani. Dr. Andrew Daniel Seuss. Dr. Rachel Anna Southerd. Dr. Jordan Mark Stillquist. Dr. Kimberly Swafford. Dr. Benjamin Alexander Zumowski. Dr. Jonathan Tam. <laughs> Dr. Human Tazibi. Dr. Daniel Noe Tellez Guerrero. Dr. Ani Teterian Asurian.
Dr. Garrett Stephen Teske. Dr. Agatha Ada Tesmer. <laughs> Dr. Shivani Thacker. Dr. Vishal Dharani. Dr. Yusam Ting. Dr. Anthony Hua To. Dr. Tanya Torbati. Dr. Kalinda Nokhan Tran. Dr. Kent Michael Tran. Dr. Lauren Lynn Trung. Dr. Roland Trung. Dr. Mary Yunanyan. Dr. Rebecca Mary Varghese. Dr. Emily Danuta Velez. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Pooja Vora. Dr. Justin Nguyen Vu. Dr. Michael Vu. Dr. Tamina Weiss. Dr. Jamie Wang. Dr. Chardonnay Simone Ward. Dr. William Sunho Wang. Dr. George Lay Wharton. Dr. Hannah Lynn Williams. Dr. Kinchia Lam Wong. Dr. Shelby Jean Wong. Dr. Rachel Fong Fong Wu. Dr. William Wu. Dr. Irene Emily Yang.
Dr. Yi Long Yang. Dr. Christopher Sean Ye. Dr. Stanley Young. Dr. Jennifer Dahyun Yu. Dr. Skyler David Young. Dr. Zaid Zalen. Dr. Carolina Zamora Salazar. Dr. Blake Connor Zufall. I have the pleasure to introduce Dr. Kelly Parks, CPM class of 2016, an assistant professor of podiatric medicine, surgery, and biomechanics, who will administer the podiatric physician's oath. And I invite the doctors of podiatric medicine in the audience and those on the platform who wish to renew their oath to stand with Dr. Parks in this class. Would the new doctors of podiatric medicine please rise? Good morning and congratulations, class of 2023. It's my privilege to be leading you in reciting the podiatric physician's oath. The first time you made this oath was at your white coat ceremony just a few short years ago as you first made the commitment to begin this journey. Today you will speak it again for the first time as new doctors, as confirmation of your commitment to the profession and your future patients. So please turn to page 32 in your program to follow along and you will recite the oath along with me. All right, let's begin. I do solemnly swear on my honor and by all things that I hold sacred that as a practitioner of podiatric medicine, I shall abide by the following precepts. I shall, above all, hold paramount the welfare of my patient, regardless of fee or favor. I shall neither prescribe nor give any treatment or drug which will be detrimental to their well-being. I shall endeavor to uphold the dignity of the professional way of life, the aims of which are to render public service. 
I shall hold high the profession's principles and precepts. I pledge that I shall do everything I am able to do to promote and to protect podiatric medicine and to aid my fellow practitioners. I dedicate myself in service to the health of humanity, and I hold as my goal the relief of pain and suffering. Congratulations. Please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Rebecca Giusti Dio, Chair of our Neuromuscular Medicine Osteopathic Manipulative Medicine Department, who will lead the Dio class in the Osteopathic Oak. At this time, I invite the Dio's in the audience and those on the platform who wish to renew their oath to stand with Dr. Giusti and the class of 2023. With the new doctors of osteopathic medicine, please rise. Congratulations to my fellow osteopathic physicians. I thank you in advance for reading this oath with me thoughtfully and with the gravity that it holds. I will count us down from three and then we'll read it together. For those with programs, it's on page 33. So three, two, one. I do hereby affirm my loyalty to the profession that I am about to enter. I will be mindful always of my great responsibility to preserve the health and life of my patients, to retain their confidence and respect, both as a physician and a friend who will guard their secrets with scrupulous honor and fidelity, to perform faithfully my professional duties, to employ only those recognized methods of treatment consistent with good judgment and with my skill and ability, keeping in mind always nature's laws and the body's inherent capacity for recovery. I will be ever vigilant in aiding the general welfare of the community, sustaining its laws and institutions, not engaging in those practices which will in any way bring shame or discredit upon myself or my profession. I will give no drugs for deadly purposes to any person, though it be asked of me. I will endeavor to work in accord with my colleagues in a spirit of progressive cooperation and never by word or by act cast imputations upon them or their rightful practices. I will look with respect and esteem upon all those who have taught me my art. To my college, I will be loyal and strive always for its best interests and for the entrance of the students who will come after me. I will be ever alert to further the application of basic biologic truths to the healing arts and to develop the principles of osteopathic medicine as taught by my profession. In the presence of this gathering, I bind myself to my oath. Thank you, congratulations, and please be seated. Thank you, please be seated. Now I have the uh, wonderful opportunity to go ahead and present uh, one of our alumni. Um, now Dr. Uh, Hugh Aparan, comp class of 2017, is a chief fellow in pulmonary and critical care medicine at Thomas Jefferson Hospital in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He'll bring a welcome from the Western U Alumni Association, PK. Thank you all. First of all, and most importantly, congratulations again to the class of 2023. <laughs> We're almost there, folks. I stand here proudly as a recent alumnus of Western U, not too far removed from the seats you guys occupy today. And today, I have the absolute honor 
of congratulating and celebrating each and every one of you and welcoming you to the next step of your journey. The current landscape of healthcare is as dynamic as it has ever been. You are entering the field at a time of staggering growth and development where the intersection of technology and medicine are allowing for therapeutics and management to seem limitless. And I think this is probably a good time for my disclaimer that no algorithm or AI was used in the writing of this speech. <laughs> in just two months, you will be introduced in hospitals, clinics, and operating rooms all over the country as physicians. I remember my first few weeks as an intern, waking up before sunrise, finally donning a coat that covered my knees. I recall a clear sense of apprehension as I navigated this new role where all of a sudden I had the responsibility over the care of another human being. On those days and through many more throughout my training, I just as vividly recall overcoming that unease with a sense of confidence and assurance. I owe that to my time at Western U. You will be prepared. You will stand tall amongst your peers, and that is because of the education and training you received here today by many of the staff and faculty that sit amongst you. So I know we did this, but can we have one more round of applause for all the staff, educators, and advocates here today? The years ahead will be challenging and undoubtedly rewarding. You will have days where you can feel like you can do no wrong and others where you can feel like you can do no right. I hope that you persevere through each day with your head held high, filled with the same ambition, curiosity, and purpose that, that drove you thus far. Through an incredible four years where you were introduced to an inextricably complicated healthcare system, tossed in the middle of a pandemic where you were also tasked with learning the fundamentals of medicine and surgery, all while seeking to understand how you fit amongst it all. And despite this daunting challenge, you persisted and succeeded, and I hope you will continue to. Each of you will move forth and contribute a great deal to the world. I truly mean that. Some of you will soar as leaders and innovators in medicine, in science, education, leadership, research or policy, but never lose sight of the fact that being able to make one diagnosis, to treat one patient, or to speak kindly to someone on what may be the worst day of their life allows you the opportunity to change that person's life forever. Never lose sight of this. And so each of you will have an impact on someone's world. Remember that. The road ahead will also be exciting. But I spend nearly as much time looking forward as I do reflecting on the journey I've taken thus far. We should all move forward deliberately with inspiration, intent, so that one day we can look back and be proud of the legacy we leave behind. Take a moment and envision your future. How will that look? What will your legacy be? For some, it will be as a master clinician or scientist driving your fields forward. Or maybe it will be as a leader successfully running a practice, hospital, or healthcare system where you have the opportunity to take care of thousands of patients at a time. Or perhaps your careers will be heralded by taking care of generations of families in the communities you were raised in. Each of you will begin to define your own legacy as a physician today. While we are all here to celebrate the promise of your career, I would be remiss if I did not remind you of one last thing. Do not forget to invest in yourselves. Commit time and energy into balancing your career with individual growth. Celebrate your diversity, your many talents outside of medicine, and all of the facets of your life that add depth, complexity, and fulfillment to your day. And always, always be thankful for the family and friends that stood with you and propped you up on your hardest days, many of whom traveled long and far to celebrate your continued success here today continue to invest in them too, even if it means having to give a lifetime of free medical advice along the way. <laughs> Trust me, it's worth it. So without further ado, it is my privilege to officially welcome you as alumni of Western University of Health Sciences. Will the members of the class of 2023 please stand up?
to signify your accomplishments and your change in status from students to alumni, please move your tassel from the right side of your cap to the left, placing it over your heart. Congratulations and welcome to the Western New Alumni Association. Please be seated. Let's congratulate them one more time. And thank you to Dr. Kira Paraharan. Thank you. A few months shy of four years ago, you first donned your white coat. At the time, you were told the white coat symbolizes the trust and confidence the patient puts in you, and the compassion and integrity expected from and required of you. Today you reach the top. You get that well-deserved long white coat. Yet despite this amazing accomplishment, the simple fact remains, your job is changing. Now synonymous on July 1st, it becomes more responsibility, possibly a new location, and back to the bottom of the ladder in our hierarchical world of medicine. You'll have some unpleasant experiences. I'll certainly, I will never forget some of the patients I treated in my PGY1 rotations. But these, these will pass. You'll retell these stories years later, and your reaction will always be the best part. So no matter how scarring the experience may have been, or how funny it becomes later, always remember the central part of the story is the patient. Peter Parker's Uncle Ben once said, with greater power comes greater responsibility. Voltaire said it first, but that's not important right now. <laughs> What's important is that you've gained an incredible amount of knowledge over the last four years, and knowledge is power. So to spin Uncle Ben's words, I offer you, with greater knowledge comes greater responsibility. And with the knowledge you now have, that new long white coat that symbolizes your greater responsibility. While the unpleasant and yet memorable experiences will pass, you will still be working within an overly complex and flawed healthcare system. It's a system that almost seems as if it was designed to fail those who need it most. Our healthcare system faces injustices, similar to those we learn about on the news or potentially experience ourselves. So I challenge you, use your newfound responsibility to challenge the system. Treat everyone how you want to be treated. Better yet, help change the system so everyone is treated equally and we eliminate healthcare disparities. This is at the core of the oath you just took. It's what it means to be a healthcare professional, a true display of humanism and character. In case this challenge is not enough, Remember never to neglect yourself, your family, or your friends. Life is far too short, and be there for those who matter most. Take pride in your work and in your achievements, but do it with humility. Give thanks and show gratitude. As your journey at Western U comes to a close, I hope you have fond memories. Your accomplishments are a testament to your dedication and your hard work. We wish you continued success and eagerly await and anticipate the incredible contributions you will make throughout your careers. But most of all, we're proud to welcome you as the newest alumni of CPM. Congratulations. Class of 2023, congratulations on your uh, graduation from medical school today. Yeah. Th this achievement represents the culmination of your hard work, dedication, and perseverance. And we're all incredibly proud of you. On behalf of every everyone at Western U, I join your families and friends in celebrating your well-deserved accomplishments. As you embark upon your journey as physicians, it is important to remember that ethical behavior, professionalism, 
service to our fellow humans, and the courage to uphold these values have always been the core of the phys physician identity. Therefore, I charge you to seek the truth and pursue it steadily. Always conduct your lives with integrity and put your patients first. Altruism and a deep sense of our shared humanity form the basis for your calling to medicine. And your capability to care for others is what sets you apart. Furthermore, I encourage you to sustain your call to service and advocacy that brought you to Western U. There is so much that needs to be done in our communities, in our country, and around the world. Strive to be the physician citizen, the physician officer, or the physician activist that will make an impact beyond the exam room. As our newest Western U alumni, I urge you to continue pursuing your dreams and stay engaged with your alma mater. We are eager to know how you are doing and take pride in your achievements. We want you to stay involved with you and support you in any way possible. Finally, as you transition into residency and begin honing your clinical skills in your chosen field of study, remember to adopt a work-life balance. Although the rigors of residency may be intense, taking time for yourself, your family and friends is essential for your well-being and happiness. Nurture relationships with your colleagues they will be lifelong. From all of us at the College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific and Western University, we wish you the very best in your career as you care for your patients and positively impact your communities. Congratulations, graduates. We are proud of you. Thank you, deans. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the class of 2023. In closing, congratulations to you all as we gather here today to celebrate the accomplishments of these remarkable new clinicians before us. It's an honor to address you with a few parting thoughts on today's powerful theme of humanism in medicine and healthcare. The journey of a healthcare professional like yourselves is not only about acquiring knowledge and mastering skills, but it's also about embracing the principles of compassion, empathy, and humility as we've heard this morning. As we stand on the precipice of a new chapter in the lives of you, our beloved graduates, let us reflect once more on the importance of humanism in shaping the future of healthcare. What you have heard today is that healthcare professionals like yourselves have a privilege and responsibility of caring for people at their most vulnerable. The ability to empathize with patients, families, to truly listen and to make genuine connections is what sets exceptional clinicians apart. Remember, the heart of medicine and healthcare lies in the relationships that you build with your patients. As you venture forth into your medical and healthcare careers, embrace the power of humanism by treating every patient with the respect and dignity they so deserve. Regardless of background, race, socioeconomic status, gender preference, each patient is an individual deserving of the highest level of respect and healthcare quality delivery. In a world where technology often dominates the conversation, Never forget the importance of the human interaction and a re reassuring hand on the patient's shoulder. Remember that humility is essential in the practice of our art. As you continue to grow and learn, you will encounter situations where you must admit that you do not have all the answers. Embrace those moments as opportunities to collaborate, listen, learn from your colleagues, and learn from your patients. I've often advocated and believed that our patients know best. By approaching your work with humility, you will foster an environment of trust, which is integral to a successful patient-doctor relationship. As you embark on this exciting new chapter, let humanism be your guiding light, always putting the well-being of your patients at the forefront of your practice. 
maintain your curiosity, keep learning, never lose sight of the human connections that make healthcare such a rewarding and transformative field. You have already achieved so much, and we are excited to see the tremendous impact you will make as compassionate, empathetic, and humanistic medical professionals. May your journey ahead be filled with growth, fulfillment, and the unwavering knowledge that you are making a difference in the lives of countless individuals. Thank you again, and distinguished faculty, esteemed guests, our proud family, friends, and loved ones, it's an honor to present to you the graduating class of 2023. With this, I declare these commitment exercises closed. Godspeed. Distinguished guests, for those who are able, please stand and remain at your seat for the academic recessional. For the safety of all, it is essential that the aisles are kept clear until the faculty and graduates have exited the auditorium and lobby. Commencement assistants will inform you when it is clear for you to exit the auditorium. Your graduates will gather their belongings and will meet you outside in approximately 30 minutes.